jump right into this, man. But the one thing that I did actually notice uh, when I was actually doing research for this interview, I saw that you were a huge football fan, man, and you actually had the opportunity to meet some of the New England Patriots. I have to ask you, man, what was it like meeting the New England Patriots? Yeah, like I stay, I stay like an hour or something. This is like back, back when well, like, uh, the job I was working at, and at the time, and like, pictures, so, so I was in there. Did you get the opportunity and, uh, to um sorry sorry uh, did you get the opportunity to meet um Tom Brady at all? Oh no, 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 nah, nah. And it seems and it seems like if I won't since he's down in uh floor, I'm gonna have to fly down here to meet him with Tom. <laughs> hey man, you never know. Uh, hopefully next time you can make that one happen, man. You know what I mean? Uh, Tom Brady, man, is probably one oh, of yeah, the best yeah. QBs of all time. And also, I saw on Instagram that you were actually a member of the duo uh, Black and Extra. I have to ask you, can you tell us a bit more about that? And do you guys still make music? Um, actually, actually, that was kind of like a, 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 a old group, basically. Like, like me and him, we started off in like high school writing. This is like mid '90s, early like '94, '95. Like, like, that's my man, extra, extra, like, we go way back, like, like, we had the same, same English class, we met in English class, and, and, and I found out he rap. So, so, ever since then, we've been writing together, writing together, and, and we came up with the group, Black Nextro, and, and, and we've been doing it locally, like, like high school, like, like, fresh out of high school. We open up for like Eminem, Mob D, Foxy Brown. Like, like we were part of a, of a local label out here, like, like back in the uh, 90s. So we was kind of like doing it. Like around the Springfield, Mad, Oxford area, like, like Boston area, like, like local region. So I have to ask you this, man. When you opened up for Eminem, like, what, what, what was this like? What year was this? And of course, did you happen to meet the, like, you know, one of the rap gods, as they call him, you know, Eminem? Actually, now, nah, nah, we didn't get to meet Eminem, but, but I still remember the show like, like it was yesterday. Like, it, like it was, it was Eminem. My was on the bill. Uh, we actually got to chill meet with my people uh, at night and like a couple. Times, and, uh, but, but nah, not Eminem though. We, but we got to uh, meet your hand and mom though, for a little bit. Hey, man, not a lot of people can actually say they opened up for Eminem, man. So that's actually just a phenomenal, phenomenal thing to actually put on your resume, man. Because, not, like I said, not a lot of people really have that opportunity to open up for Eminem. Fact, fact. Even though, even though that was like a long time ago, but, but that was like when he first opened up. And, I mean, like first, when he first came out. Like, uh, I don't know, like 99, like somewhere around there, 98. And also, in 2017, yourself and Dirty White did a collab mixtape called Better Late Than Never. I have to ask you, what's the story behind that collaboration? And also, is that album still available on the internet for individuals to purchase today? Yes, uh, it's still available. Actually, it's on SoundCloud. It's on... Uh... Yeah, 
yeah, that whole that whole mixtape came about. Um, just like just how you dig into my my past, cause like the nineties, I, 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 like basically I was doing music in the nineties and it stopped. Like some 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 crazy stuff happened with the music, like with the producers and stuff. So we, a lot of ended up bumping heads. So so over the years, from like two thousand and two to like. 2013, I kind of wanted to spell back the music, but my love for the music brought me back. So basically, when I spell it back, that's kind of what gave me the title Better Late Than Ever, because for me to come from the 90s to now, it's kind of like, okay, hey, I'm, it's kind of like, I'm late, but it's, it's better late than never, like, than not trying to do like, like they not making it at all. Like still to make it happen. That's how I got that time. Hey man, it's a great it's a great title for it, man. And when you say you still have hard copies, man, how can people hit you up? Like of course, if they're for sale, like how can people hit you up to get themselves a hard copy of that? Um, actually, uh, probably could probably hit me up on Instagram. At Black AKA Mac on my Instagram, on my Facebook, Joe Mac. Hit me up. Or or actually uh actually if if if, if people you know they can hit you up too and then and then you and then and then and then get into it like that too also. Hey most definitely. And also I noticed you did a lot of work with Johnny Cash, uh, sorry, sorry, Cash Nova. I have to ask you, uh, how did you get connected yeah. with Johnny? And like, of course, what was it like working with him? Um, Johnny, well, me and Johnny go way back, like, like, like from when, because me and him was working at the same place. So basically, found out that I was, I was basically this was around the time I started back doing my music, like two thousand. working at the, at the same place we were working at and then he brought us both to his place at the same time and, and that's but but me and just um, been vibing before the producer that we worked with brought us to the crib at the same time so we decided to connect and, and then ever since then like way a couple years ago like like we just stayed connected like over the years and and so like recently like really starting to like come when it come about like uh, a shot video we like that I think that's the first video we did like when was that last year last year yeah but um but the first track me and him ever ever jumped on together was was my track I came out with late 2018 uh what's wrong with it? um and I forgot what's that we done did so many jobs to say I've, I've listened to johnny's music man and he is a phenomenal phenomenal individual man most definitely brings the heat absolutely definitely definitely something to watch out for man you got, you got a fire coming and i also saw that you were actually a part of the trio called mds i have to ask you what's the story behind that formation and how did you meet the other the other two members kind of crazy too because uh, it's like it's, it's kind of like everything goes back to like the 90s um, back in the 90s when me and X was the black and X so we were signed to the local label Don Zayda and MDS was on the same label we was on back in the 90s so he kind of like did the same thing like over the years but over the years he kind of like kept going like Dibble and having like any of the music, like like he got with like known artists too, like Hell Rare, 
was the one that came, came up with the whole idea because he came back and was like, yo, if you down with the EP with me, so how about me, you, and Bonnie, they grew. We think of the next one. We sat down, chopped it up one day, and, and then bam, we came up with MDS. And now this is where we're at with MDS and plus we're doing our own, our own solo stuff too. So, so yeah, this is where we're at with it, right? And I have to say, man, one of my favorite songs that you guys have, you guys have done so far actually got released this past February called the MDS Anthem, man. I have to say to you, man, that song is absolute fire. I personally love it, man. I actually got it in ro rotation here on the radio. But I have to ask you, man, what's the inspiration behind that single? And of course, man, like where can our listeners buy or stream themselves a copy? Um, I first let me get to, uh, get it by streaming um it's available on all platforms iTunes title you can stream it Spotify group name MBS song MBS anthem it's everywhere you just look it up and it's on iTunes Apple Music and um so the song came about uh we um uh, I do have to say, man, like I said, I really enjoy that song, man. And, for... and actually, directly after this interview, I'm actually going to be playing that song uh, here live on the radio, uh, you know, man. Because like I said, I think I play that song about five times a day, man. To me, it's, abs to me, it's absolute heat. Hey, man, no, nothing but love, brother. Nothing but love, man. And also, you guys did a video uh, this past January as well for uh, your song No Remorse uh, featuring Fred the Godson, man. You know, God bless his soul. And also Johnny Casanova. But I have to ask you, what was it like working with Fred the Godson? Uh, I, think, I think that was probably like one, of the, like one of the dopest experiences that like I had doing this music. Um, like, like we hit him up for a feature and then when we we hit him up so you know we want to the video for so we met him. We met him out in Brooklyn, went out there, shot it up, shot the video and then and then it wasn't like, okay, like he's out like right after the video shoot, like 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 he sat back still. Left hair like um I forgot what project had had that was just about to come out right before he passed. And uh, he let us listen to the whole thing, and, and we was just all vibe. And like, it was it was just like, like the experience was just dope because because like over the years we looked to him as like one of the uh, spitters, boss of bar MCs out there, and, and and for us to get to a song with him, like like it was like it was crazy. And then we put the uh, we shot the video, chill with him. And then it, 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 just, it just so happened that he ended up passing like a couple months later, like two or three months later, like like we all were just like wow, like 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 it was, like, it was like a shock. And I most like, definitely agree with that, like, man. I got to say, COVID nineteen is a terrible thing, man. Um, I, I I remember seeing the picture of him 
on his Instagram being like, pray for, pray for, pray for me. Right. And at this, at the, I'm going to be honest with you at this time, I didn't even take COVID-19 seriously. I just thought it was, you know, just some little cold or whatever. But then I noted, then when I started seeing individuals like him pass away, I really started taking stuff seriously, man, because you know what I mean? Someone of his age passing away from COVID-19 is some serious stuff. And I do want to express my condolences to his friends and family. And also, recently, you were featured on Matt, uh, Matt Smith's Foul Play. I have to ask you, how did you get connected with Matt Smith, man? And, of course, where can our listeners actually listen to Foul Play? Oh, um, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's brand spanking new right there. That, that just came out that's, that's the weekend. That's brand spanking now. Um, you joe what's next for you is there anything i happen to miss during this interview anything else you want to promote or let our live listeners know we still have you here on the air um got a new single dropping probably like within the next next week or two uh I gotta say, Joe, thank you so much again for coming on 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM, man. It truthfully was an honor and most definitely a privilege, and I hope down the line we can make this happen again sometime soon. Thanks, thanks, thanks for having me, man. Appreciate you, no doubt. We definitely, definitely make it happen again. Hey, man, most definitely. You are most certainly welcome, and whenever you need that extra exposure, don't hesitate to hit me up, man. We can set something up for sure. For so, sure, no doubt. I definitely, I definitely be most definitely man and uh try and stay safe out there but for now man have yourself a great night all right you too man peace out peace much love much love brother